Okay, so we're continuing our look at sequences in series, and today we're going to look at arithmetic sequences in series. Now, this word is kind of funny because it's spelled the same as arithmetic, okay? And when we're talking about the study of arithmetic as a noun, we pronounce it that way, but when we use it as an adjective like this, we usually pronounce it arithmetic, okay? Don't let that confuse you. Um, but notice we're, we're still looking at the same essential question. How do patterns of numbers progress? And we're, we're looking at a specific pattern of numbers today, the arithmetic sequence, okay? Yesterday, we, or uh, Tuesday for you, we looked at the first three terms here, sequences, series, and recursive. Today, we're going to look at the next two, arithmetic and common difference, okay? Now, let's start out by looking at this sequence. We have the definition of a sequence, a sub n equals 2n plus 4. And we looked at how to find terms of the sequence. So go ahead and take a moment, find the first five terms of this sequence. You'll have to worry about graphing at this moment, but find the first five terms. Oh, you got some. Thank you. Okay, uh, what do you get for our first term? Can someone give me that, Lexi? Six. Six, okay. Uh, two times one would be two, plus four is six. Very good. All right, uh, our second term? Eight. 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 Okay, good. Two times two is four, plus four is eight. How about our third term? Yes. 10, okay, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10. Our next one, yes, 12. 12, all right, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 4 is 12. And our last one, 14, 14. okay, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 4 would be 14. Now, we can actually graph a sequence, yeah. all right? Instead of using x and y, however, this axis here would be our n axis, and this axis here would be a sub n. You guys actually saw this in the homework, uh, in the practice problems there, when you were matching a graph to the sequence, okay? So you did a little bit of this. So if we're graphing this, though, when n is 1, a sub n is 6. So here's 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, one difference here is that notice we're just going to plot points because a sequence is a function whose domain is what? What did we say? The domain of a sequence is what? No. The positive integers. Remember, domain in this case is it's what the uh, the uh, independent variable can equal. That's what the domain is. In this case, the independent variable is n. All right. So what can n equal in a sequence? It can be a positive one, two, three. It has to be a positive integer. Okay, so that's our domain. Um, so that being said, we're not going to plot anything on the axis here, and we're not going to go to the left at all. 
okay? And we're not going to find fractions, all right? Meaning we're not going to connect these dots, these points, after we graph them either. Okay, we're just going to have individual points. So our second one, when n is 2, a sub n is 8. When n is 3, a sub n is 10. When, a, when n is 4, a sub n is 12. And when n is 5, a sub n is 14. Okay? So tell me, as you look at all of that, what do you see? A line. Huh? A line. We see a line, okay? If we were to connect those points, we would get a line, right? Yeah. And we're not going to because it's a sequence, but we see what we could call a linear relationship, right? Um, what else do you see? They're all, they all add two. Okay, each one adds two. <laughs> all right, good. And because we're adding the two, it's going to be going up. All right. Now, you guys identified the key things that we need to identify here when it comes to working with arithmetic sequences. Okay. Arithmetic sequences are going to be linear in nature, okay? And that's because between each term, you're going to have, you're going to be adding the same amount, okay? Like they mentioned, we're, we're adding 2 each time, all right? That's very important to recognize because... Here's one of our uh, vocabulary terms. That two is the common difference. All right? And that's how we know this is an arithmetic sequence because we have a common difference. All right? The common difference will often use D for D equals two. Okay? Any questions so far? All right. Now, in thinking of this in terms of a linear relationship, what does that 2 relate to? Slope. Okay. The slope of a line, right? The 2 tells us the rate of change. Where every 1 n increases, a sub n is going to increase 2. All right, that's, a, that's significant as we, as we try to find sequences. Because here's the thing, most of the time we're not going to be given this definition. We're going to have to come up with the definition. So let's look at how we might do that. All right, first of all, we need to determine... Is it an arithmetic sequence in, in the first place? Okay. How do we know it's an arithmetic sequence? What? Because it adds a subtraction. Oh, okay. That's correct. Let's keep going. Um, there is a common difference that never changes. Okay. We're adding or subtracting, and it adds and subtracts the same amount, that common difference, all right? Is there a common difference? Okay, is there a common difference? If so, then we ask ourselves, okay, what is that difference? And you probably already have it identified. Finally, you can find a sub n. All right, that's kind of a process that you're going to go through. So let's do that here with this, and we'll talk about this in just a second. Okay, so as we're looking at this sequence right here, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and so on, is that arithmetic? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It has a common difference, and that common difference is? Three. Three. All right. 
The common difference is three. Now, your book shares with you this, okay? When we're trying to find a sub n, we already said a number of times here that this is a linear relationship, okay? How do you guys find the equation of a line? You use slope, which in this case, slope is equivalent to the d, the common difference, right? What else do you need to know in order to find the equation of a line? Intersects. Okay, we points. could use, yeah, or less, less specifically, any point, all right? Well, can we tell a point from this? Can someone give me a point that would be on the graph of the sequence? One, three. Okay, one, three. Now, notice our points aren't x and y, right? Like we saw, our points are n and a sub n. All right, so we could use the point 1, 3. Or we could use the point 2, 6, or 3, 9, or 4, 12, right? Yeah. Whatever n is, and then the value of that term of the sequence. Well, now you know the slope, the common difference, and you know a point. Every one of you knows how to find the equation of a line, right? So finding... The definition of the sequence is really no different, is it? Because we know it's linear. All right, so let's try it. How would we, how would we go about doing it? Does someone have an idea? Plus, okay, Santiago, you said zero, okay, how'd you get zero? Okay, think about the slope, right? You're increasing three every time, so if you went backwards, remember this part right here is going to be kind of like your y-intercept, even though we know there is no y-intercept on this, technically, we're still doing the same idea with the equation. So we're going down three every time. So if we went down three more, we'd be at zero. Okay? So a sub n would be three n. All right? So not too bad. The reason why I'm making such the connection with the linear idea is because really there's not a whole lot of new concepts here. It's the same concept, finding the equation of a line. We're just applying it to a different context. Okay, arithmetic sequences. Right. Let's try a couple others here. All right. Let's say I had that sequence. What do we do first? 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28, 36. It's not our don't have it doesn't have a common difference, right? Um, the co the difference here would be three, four, five, six, etc. All right. Now, this one is not an arithmetic sequence. Isn't it geometric? Geometric. It's actually that's that's good thinking. This one is not technically a geometric. We're going to look at that tomorrow, because geometric, you have to multiply by something the same time every time. Here, actually, this is kind of, this is actually quadratic, because notice these have a common difference. Now, we're not going to delve into that, all right? We're not going to get into dealing with quadratic ones, but actually, there is a way to define this a sub n. But right now we're looking at arithmetic sequences, so all we would say is not arithmetic. OK? 
Okay? In order to find the quadratic a sub n, we would have to actually set up a system of equations and solve it and stuff, and we're just not going to get into that right now. Okay? All right, uh, let's try one more. And try this one on your own, okay? Three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, ten and a half, twelve. All right, so what's our common difference here? 1.5. 1.5. All right, so we know it's a sub n equals 1.5 n plus something. It's 1.5. Notice if you keep counting down, it, keep, it goes down 1.5. 1.5 one one before this would be 1.5. Okay, three minus one and a half is one and a half. Okay, you can always double check yourself. Plug in a one, and you get three, which is what we were supposed to get. Okay. Now, the last thing I will say is the partial sum. This is just a formula that you're going to need to know. Okay. If we have an arithmetic series, here are the two that we just found: three n and one and a half n plus one and a half. Let me show you this formula and we're going to finish off with this, okay? You remember our notation yesterday, we use capital S sub n for the nth partial sum. So if we want the fifth partial sum, we would use S sub 5, okay? Now, the formula that you're going to see most often is right here n divided by 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. In other words, we're going to do the first term plus, in this case, the fifth term times 5 over 2. I actually prefer to rewrite this formula and put the divided by 2 underneath this instead. Because it's easier to remember the concept here. What is this value here in terms of a sub 1 and a sub n? When you add two things and divide by 2, what are you finding? The average. the average or the mean, right? So if you think of it, instead of trying to memorize a formula, think of it as n times the average of the first and last. Okay? So the first term here, we're finding s sub 5. So it's 5 times, what's the first term? 3. What's the fifth term? 15. 15. So we're averaging 3 and 15. What's the average of 3 and 15? 9. So it's 5 times 9. 45. Okay? So we don't have to find all five terms. We just have to find the first and the last, average them, and times n. Okay? All right. I think we're out of time for the last thing, but I think you guys get it. It's just a simple formula you plug it in for. Uh, the fifth term, a sub n, since we're finding s sub 5, n would be 5, so we just plug it in. Okay? All right, there is some practice for tomorrow. Take some time to work through those public questions, all right? Have a wonderful day. Yeah, this will be on the website. Actually, it already is on the website, so, so you can see it there. All right, have a great day. Um,
Trigonometry. Uh, we will get to trigonometry, I think, near the end of this first trimester. Okay, because we're going to do a lot of statistics and probability first trimester. And then we'll be getting into tri trigonometry end of this or beginning of second can trimester. I, can I let me invite Ken all by myself and can I ask you a question? About Absolutely. Trigonometry? I'd be happy to answer because questions. Because I'm taking ACT this so okay. I never learned the answer. Okay, yeah, I'd be happy to help you out. So. Um, I just have one more quick question. Mm -hmm. 